What's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's KB and we locked in, now let's jump into it. Today, we're gonna be talking about a rapper named Bankroll Freddy, who was coming straight out of my home state, Arkansas. Now, Freddy was just indicted by the FBI in a massive 61 count indictment that seen over 35 people being arrested and wrapped up in this Fed case, and this included his own father. So without further ado, Let's go. Hey, real quick, before we jump into the video, guys, I know that I've told y'all in the community tab and stuff before, but just before we get in this video, I wanted to kind of let you guys know I did make a second channel. It's called KB Goes Live V2. When y'all get a moment, y'all go ahead, jump over there and hit that subscribe button because we lit on that channel. It's much more relaxed than this channel, much less scripted than this channel. And some people say I'm actually a little bit funny over there. So if you're interested in that content, Y'all tap the little card that's up in the left hand side of the screen and I'm going to see y'all over there. Anyways, let's get back to this video. Bankroll Freddy, real name Freddy Gladney III, is a rapper coming straight out of Helena, Arkansas. Helena is a grimy little city posted just next to Memphis and often acts as a hub for moving work between Tennessee and Arkansas and even all the way down to Texas. Now, I'm from Arkansas, so I can attest to how things work, and most of us get in the streets pretty early out here. Bankroll Freddy was no exception to that either. For sure. Yeah, it goes down to Little Rock. Like, a lot of people think it gets a little country time. Arkansas, period. A lot of people think it's country and Wayne Hill. Man, I'm telling you, it's like that down. In an interview with DJ Vlad, Bankroll Freddy recalled being in the first grade and telling his teachers when they asked him what he wanted to be when he grew up, that he wanted to be a dope boy. I remember one time in, um, in school, we was doing like what we wanted to be when we grew up. And man, I, I didn't boo it. Man, I just said I wanted to be, be like my dad. I wanted to see a judge like my dad in school. Most people know that a lack of a father in a household can be a detrimental thing to a growing child. And some would even say that having the father around is the best thing, but clearly, this wasn't the case in this situation because his father and his father's street life was just as detrimental to him as it would have been if he wasn't there at all. Freddie watched as his dad hustled, gambled, and gangbanged his entire life, and this example is exactly the path that Freddie would follow. He could be quoted as saying that his dad is the reason that he got into the street life, saying that he wanted to be just like him. Every child, you know what I'm saying, they want to be like their daddy. No, nah, for real. Saying, I want to be just like my, my dad. I want to be like my dad. Yeah, I want to be just like my daddy, so I follow his footsteps. You know what I'm saying? Freddie even claims that his dad is the one who gave him his first gun at the age of only 13. It's who you raised by your mom, your dad. I don't know that. My mom ain't my dad. I was in the way though. Cold crown house, all a child like 13. Uh huh. Yeah, then I got 13, you know, I was in the street. Uh, my dad got him my first go at 13, you know what I'm saying? No, for real. That pretty up. For real, for real. You know what I'm saying? I get more with my dad at me at like 13 to 15. I was seeing on an interview, you were saying some stuff about gambling, your dad wants to gamble and shit like that. Yeah, my dad, and not only my gambling. So, uh, those red, like the bottom people know him. That was in the house, but my dad was supposed to speak what? Big boy, I heard it. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. With influences like that around, who needs enemies? Anyways, while most kids spend their time playing with their toys or watching cartoons in their youth, Freddie was already witnessing the ways of the street. Well, you mentioned that your dad was the dope game. Right, exactly. So would you see him as he did his transactions and all that or not really? Yeah, that's how I got it. I used to see him like, you know what I'm saying, hustling. I used to be, I was with him. I was with my daddy 24 seven, so I seen this firsthand. I knew what was going on. I already knew like everything about the situation. So, I mean, I knew what he was. He was a dope boy. This is bad parenting at his finest right here. Then at only nine years old, he watched as one of his cousins caught a body in front of him. According to Bankroll, he was at the candy store getting some treats. And when he left, he seen his cousin chasing her brother down the road with a knife in her hand. She was using that knife to repeatedly stab her brother. Freddie says that the man fell down in front of him and was begging for somebody to help. So he ran off to call 911 to get some help for the man. He said he watched his paramedics hit the man's chest with the defibrillators, but 
He wouldn't survive this incident. His cousin, the female who was chasing him down with the butcher knife, was never charged for the murder because there was a history of domestic violence between the two. Now, I can't imagine how traumatizing an incident like this would be for somebody that's only nine years old. Nah, I seen my, nah, like nine, I seen my uh, cousin get killed by his sister. She cut him up and shit like that, it was crazy. I just seen some Even though this is a story that Bankroll Freddy's told time and time again, I haven't been able to find any documentation of an incident happening like this in any of the cities that Freddy has lived in throughout his life at any period in time, so I'd probably take that story with a grain of salt. Anyways, after this, and the shooting death of another one of his cousins in 2009, he started to bounce around the state a little bit, moving in between cities like Little Rock and Conway. Conway being where he graduated high school from. And hey, uh, in 2009, my cousin got killed in Helena. So uh, I moved to Conway with my mom. I was staying in Helena with my daddy in 09, and he got killed. Um, July 5th, 2009, moved to Conway, started going to school in Conway, Arkansas. And when that happened, was that the most uh, impactful death in your life at this point? Most definitely. That was my, that was somebody I looked up to and wanted to be just like, so you know, yeah, that took a toll on me. I was, I was like right there when they jumped out with it, boom. He, they hopped in the car, watched him drive out, pull down the street. Get a gunfire. Like a drive-by shooting type of thing? Uh, yeah, they had a full-fledged shootout. It was a big shootout. And it, it went down. From graduation to now, Freddie was able to make a pretty good rise in the music industry by dropping consistent music and booking some high-profile collabs through his connection at QC the label. Now that we know a little bit about his upbringing, let's take a look at how he was able to build a successful rap career for himself in under four years. Bankroll Freddy first popped up on a rap scene in December of 2017, when he released a freestyle over Lil Baby's freestyle beat. Yeah, he freestyled over a freestyle, but this was a success, with the song racking up over 50,000 views in the first month. Now, this wasn't technically his first song, but it was his first official release, and this is what made him to decide it was time to start taking music a little bit more serious. You remember, you, you remember the first time you made your first song? Yeah, I made my first, well, now, listen, when I was young, we used to play with it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, but like, never like. Beating on the table. Yeah, you know, freestyle. we used to do a little freestyle list. Like, I had did a song back in the day. I was young as I probably did like two songs, but it was nothing, never, where I was like, man, I'm a rap. I ain't never thought about rapping. Never. What? Nah, I ain't never, it never wasn't my passion. I'm gonna be a rapper, nah. It wasn't never it. So what, what what was you expecting? Like, you know, I'm going to just keep, you know what I'm saying, thugging and, you know, what happened happened or nah, was it yeah, like? Nah, it was like, what was the aspiration before it? Before rap? Was yeah, like, like, like what, what would you, what would you want to do? Like, if you didn't like my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first sign? What was the first sign? Like, all right, music could be my way now. I had did a song. Mm -hmm. I had redid Lil Baby, Lil Baby Freestyle. Yeah. Shout out my lady with me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm yeah, reading yeah. that junk. That smooth little junk. And that, but that was shit. Man, one month I had like 50K. And that's in Arkansas. How the city, how the city reacted when you dropped that? Because you was already popular, like you saying. Yeah, so when yeah, you started yeah. rapping, like, oh, that, oh man, I was loving this shit. In his own words, it also served as a way to start other businesses, like a car lot or a trucking company, in order to clean up the money, which, Sounds a lot like money laundering to me. Oh, like, like every dope boy that I ever knew, like they run their money or they go get on some big trucks like this. Yeah, so you yeah, know, we're gonna get some, some we're gonna clean this up like this. We're gonna sell some car like this. Make this look good, like, mm -hmm. all right, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you know, nah, you know, yeah. You no know, street can know how to figure their way out this. Some way. They gonna, you gonna oh, clean this money up or something. Oh, you gonna send our girl to school. Yeah, she gonna be a nurse. Yeah. Take care. We gonna, we gonna, <laughs> we gonna make this. Look good. It's a formula for sure. For it's sure. A formula for sure. Sure. If you front of the street, you know what's popping. You know what? what's happening. Fun fact about these statements. 
It just so happens that years later, after this interview, he did in fact open up a car dealership in Little Rock and a trucking company called Big Bang Trucking. Just saying. Plus, he said another one of his motives for taking rap serious was that one of his close friends got indicted right after he dropped that freestyle over that little baby beat. I would tell him I'm partner man, like, huh? Rap. He laughed at me. I made him do a song. He was a <laughs> Yeah. My nigga got indicted. He got indicted by the feds. Mm -hmm. I really took it to you, Dean. Like, shh. hey man, shh. I ain't finna play. Yeah, yeah. It's old with like, I ain't finna play with my life. Nah. He followed this freestyle over Lil Baby's beat up with another single a few months later in April of 2018 titled Malibu, which was another freestyle over a Black Boy JB and 21 Savage song titled Rover. Following that trend of rapping over other people's beats, his next moment in the spotlight would come when he dropped his first mixtape that was titled Saved by the Bills in July of 2019. A few standout songs on this mixtape were the original version of his hit record Drip Like This that ended up getting a verse from Young Dolph. A man Freddie says he's looked up to since Dolph first came out and coincidentally is also his cousin. The Drip Like This remix also had a feature from Lil Baby, but again, this wasn't on this album and it wouldn't come until a few months later. This mixtape just had the original Drip Like This on it. This mixtape also included a feature from Arkansas rapper Ed Dolo, who is also from Helena and has been popping for a little while longer than Freddie. Anyways, it actually wasn't any of these songs that really put him onto his feet though. Instead, that came from a freestyle he dropped over the City Girls beat Act Up on July 14, 2019. In the video, he freestyles in the kitchen and throws money around, and this caught the attention of label boss P from Quality Control Music, better known as QC. P reposted the Act Up freestyle on his Instagram and flew Freddie out to Los Angeles to talk about a deal, which Freddie ended up signing. Out with my mama earlier, this was on the radio. With my leg junk. On radio, <laughs> got to call my partner. This is on radio. I need to do a remix to them. You know what I'm saying? And so, need so, to remix my partner. My partner Chan gets now record my. You do this. You know what I'm saying? We did. You know what I'm saying? Got me signed. Got viral like one every word. I ain't know who this was. You know what I'm saying? I just seen a guy in the kitchen with a whole bunch of money. Yeah. I never listened to the song really. I just kept seeing your face. And I was like, damn, man, for what I knew, you around Peter. You know what I'm saying? Just playing me like, we flew straight to the world without it. How to No, Rito. The Young Dolph and Lil Baby feature on Drip Like This came soon after in October. And then in November, he dropped his song Lil Mama, which featured Rennie Rucci. This song currently sits at around 5 million, while Drip Like This sits at around 65 million. Both huge wins on Bankroll Freddy's part. Only two months after that, in January of 2020, and Freddie dropped his next mixtape titled From Trap to Rap, and this album really took him to the next level. It featured songs like Rich Off Grass, which is another song that would get remixed with a Dolph verse later on. It also had a single titled Like Freddie, which featured another rapper from Dallas, Texas named Trap Boy Freddie, somebody we covered in my Mo3 documentary. Another single from this was Back In, which featured Money Bag Yo, and the drip like this remix with Lil Baby and Dolph, and also a feature from Lil Yachty on a song titled Zion. It was packed with features. Bankroll was getting cosigns from everybody, and the numbers were only going up with each release. He capitalized by releasing another freestyle titled Quarantine Flow, which captured the essence of what originally blew him up in the first place and brought in new label interest from Motown Records as well, who eventually worked their way into signing a new joint deal between them, Freddie, and QC. His next release came in September of 2021. That's when he dropped his debut album, Big Bank, and his only official album to come out today. This album has some pretty big records on it, like Add It Up, which currently sits at over 4.9 million views on YouTube. In the song, he could be seen flexing an ungodly amount of money, jewelry, and cars. He also hints at the idea that all of his money may not be legitimate, a topic that he seems to speak on a lot, and he might not have been lying, but again, more on that a little bit later. This album 
Big Bank also had his song Poppin' on it, which featured Megan Thee Stallion and currently sits at over 21 million views on YouTube. And there was another song on it titled Active, where he takes some shots at some ops. Something that'll also be relevant a little bit later in this story. Now, other features on this album included ESTG, 2 Chains, Young Scooter, PMB Rock, Big 30, and even Gucci Mane. His last release was his mixtape from Trap to Rap 2, which came out in July of 2022. At his peak, the money was rolling in. He even said that he made over $700,000 in one month alone. Biggest check you seen in one month's time. I had already said I got like 700,000 one I made like 700,000 one month. Go get the money. On top of that, he said he was being booked at 20 to 25 thousand dollars a show and was doing upwards of three shows a week. Like I had three shows every weekend. Then I, I started getting 25 bands a show, 20, 25 bands a show. Even WAC 100 recalled when he met Bankroll Freddy and Bankroll Freddy whipped out $400,000 in cash on him. Tell you. Look, I get on the phone with P. I said, P, I want to do a song with Bank Raw and True Crawl. Yeah. He gave me the number. I called him. I said, I'm gonna come to Atlanta. We do it. He said, Well, just send me the pin drop. So I was sitting there waiting, pulled up. The one of them track hawks or something. Pulled up, drove. I, he from like uh, Tennessee. Where is he from? Alabama, I think. I'm no, he from Arkansas. from Arkansas. 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 He said, Man, I'm sorry, I'm late. I said, Ain't nothing with 15 minutes late. And I had to jump on the freeway from Arkansas. I said, you come down here. So I just come down here to shoot the video, which swear to God, jumped at about 400,000. He said, oh, could you hold good? He said, about 400. I trust you with it. I just met him, said, you know, Pete, tell me how close you are, so I know I'm straight. And that, I right out there, bro, did that video, kicked his with us a couple hours, the whole shot, and jumped on the highway, got on. While the rap money is great, and was for sure Coming in by the bundle, Freddie had to make sure to let people know time and time again that he was rich before rap music. Safe to say you one of them people that had a lot of money before rap? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Sure. Hey, yeah. I got pictures proof. You can ask anybody from my city, they know. Yeah. They know what's happening. Rich on Brad, that's hearing me. Point where like could nobody tell me nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm cocky. Yeah. I'm cocky. I'm rich. I'm the one with the money. Right. A trapper made it happen. Definition of a trapper. Trap. I'm known for breaking down these bills. I ain't no f rapper. I sell them 25, but they get cheap. You get a dub. You try to score a hundred. I can make it feel. I got rich on grass. I got rich on gas. I got rich on grass. I got rich on gas. Some honey and cure in 91 gold. Yeah. Just keep it steady. Call it steady. Asking what them bones are. Yeah. I can wipe my without a beat at that rap. I was up 300 thou for P even came with a way. And looking at the history of it all, it looks like Freddie really wasn't playing. He was really out here like that. But with all the success and ties to the street, it was only natural that as his popularity rose, so did the trouble that came with it. As Bankroll Freddy made his rise in the music industry, he continued to hint at his ties to the street, and that is something that would come full circle right when he finally did blow up. Now, Arkansas street stuff ain't really been covered at all on the internet, so what I'm about to jump into can get real deep, and a lot of this stuff could really have their own videos. With that said, I'll try to condense as much of this as possible and still make it consumable for you guys because I know y'all probably don't know nothing about the people we're about to talk about. I won't hit on every incident or every rapper that I mention here extensively, but I will lay the foundation so y'all can at least have an understanding of the war that's been raging throughout the state of Arkansas and how it all links back to Bankroll Freddy. For this story, there is really only a couple of rappers that we need to touch on. One is a rapper named Mucho Remo, who is affiliated with the clique that goes by RDM or the Ring Ding Mafia. Now, RDM is cool with another crew out of Arkansas called EBK or Everybody Killers. He even has some songs with a bunch of people from EBK. This is a clique that Bankroll Freddy is a part of, according to the indictment that was unsealed against him. Now, EBK has ties to Palm Bluff. Shout out to Palm Bluff. That's where I'm originally from. Now, Mucho Remo also has ties to another person named Feezy Red, who is coming out of Little Rock as well. Then, 
We got PME JB, who is out of the east side of Little Rock, Big Tang, who is out of Blytheville, and Black Baby, who is also from Blytheville. Now there's more people involved in this, but this is our main characters for this portion of the story. Because behind these names are some pretty ruthless diss tracks, real bodies that have been dropped, and a string of criminal activity that would eventually lead to a massive indictment against Bankroll Freddy. To start things off, let's talk about the beef that's been brewing between these people and how Freddy found himself dead center in the middle of it. Like I said earlier, Freddy is cool with a rapper named Mucho Remo. Mucho Remo has beef with another rapper in the city of Little Rock named PMEJB. At first glance, their beef seems pretty petty because in interviews and in songs, it's been claimed that this beef started over one or the other not wanting to do a track with each other. Here's what Mucho Remo had to say about it. I'm learning your rap, I don't even want to speak on him, but but the rapper, the little JB, I ain't on front. On the blood, the little was trying to, how the, how the used to happen. Bro, before we was here, we was cool, we were like, we were cool, but it was just some interesting about what happened. See, every time I dropped the song, Used to DM me trying to get on the song, we even feel me, but the uh, type shit that we don't know, look, see this wet. Just the uh, DM me type trying to get on, uh, trying to get on songs every time I drop a song. Where he f around, I just never out, know it all, kid. But by the time he drop a song, I DM me on type and we just be, it'd be, it was like that for like a little while, if I'm like in your, before we even got the your brain even flip like that, but the we both was even trying to get on songs. They done put me in his curves and them other people in the group chat just trying to get on songs. Nah, it's just worship. You know, you feel me? Like I said, PMEJB claims the exact same thing. Either way, this did spiral out of control. And like we see all too often these days, it's all been recorded between diss tracks and social media posts. Check out this little compilation I made of it. Me. Trying to blink, blink. Hey, our lives gon' die before this year over. B, body after body with a switch on. C, can't forget with them young n up your big homie. Shake, whack out, then get on live. Easy eyes, I gon' get hit with that. And bark loud as blood. They know I ain't gon' be here too much longer. On the E. But I'm finna show you what that bag do. Hey, twin, let's go bounce out on the other side. Me and twin love to spin, that's how your brother died. We really get busy with these drakes. We really put glizzies in your motherfucking face. Gang hit that hoe, and you calling that hoe, babe. We the just put four of your partners in the grave. Son, they thinking they up on the score, we knock them down, son. We been the block, we pop his top and hit an M1. I ain't trying to touch, I pull up, bust, don't get no my fully tucked, don't get put up. Head smoking tea, I'm smoking nine. A hundred shots inside this ride. Cousin died and I fake you're not on the nine. You lying. I'm on Asher, I'm not high. We get the drop, then bullets fly. I got burned. Racks on his head like a perm. Not smoking knee, smoking shirt. He died at three, it got confirmed. We spin it back to back to back. He just me know it got him whacked. He had five holes in his back. Now, this was the initial beef that Freddie found himself wrapped up in the middle of. That's because Remo and Freddie had a mutual acquaintance that introduced them to the each other. Bankroll Freddy eventually invited Remo to go out on tour with him, and that's how they linked up. And how you link up with Freddy? Cause uh, let me ask you this first. Are you officially like band clan? I mean, them my people, I f with them like tough. Okay. Like I tough, like I, like, I, like, I, like, I, like, I rock with them. Like, but as far as like, like, I don't know, like, but I don't know how to, I don't know how to I link up with that. Just always, but it was before the rapping type. I already peeped that he was doing my. What? Some of the search he was doing on Instagram, like I peeped he was with us. You know what I'm saying? So when he um, so I just be DMing him, he be DMing me back. We just be on some little cool. Sh he always be like, bro, come out of town with me, bro. I be, I be on like, man, I'm, I gotta get, I'm, in I'm pussy. I'm trying to give me some money. Like I ain't really fucked up about going out of town. Like, like on no sh like that. Nah, I'm like, I'm straight on this. Sh he just like. Then one day, I can't, I don't know why I called this. I think he called me or something. And when we talked, he was just like, man, if you don't come this time, I'm done with you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> he said, bro, he said, I'm done. He said, if you don't come, because I said, because look, I really fucked up, because I, I wasn't going to go. 
But I was like, bro, Nino, I'm gonna come. I'm, oh, Nino, I'm gonna come. I, I'm, I'm like, bro, oh, Deshaun, I'm gonna come. I'm like, bro, if you don't come this time, I, you gonna, I, I bet. I, you, you push out on Nino. If you don't come this time, I'm done. So I'm like, so I just booked my flight. I'm like, Fuck it. Like, I was there in the hour. Well, Mucho Remo is also closely connected with members from EBK out of Palm Bluff. So, essentially, this connection forms sort of a pipeline from Helena to Little Rock and then to Palm Bluff. That'll be more important later on, but for now, that's how it all started. Another person that Mucho Remo was close with was a man named Feezy Red. Feezy Red hopped on a couple of songs with Remo where they dissed their ops in the city. After those tracks dropped, Freddie went on Instagram and shouted Feezy out, further solidifying his ties to the streets in this area. Fun fact, Feezy Red was actually part of a massive indictment back in 2018 after a shooting that took place in Pine Bluff at the Power Ultra Lounge. Now, if this sounds familiar, that's because this is the show that Finesse two times did where over 25 people were hit, and he ended up going to prison over it. I covered it extensively in my video about Finesse two times, and like I said, that incident is the incident that sent Finesse two times to prison for a few years. But what I didn't cover in that video is the massive indictment that followed in Arkansas after it all went down. Now, I didn't cover it because it didn't have nothing to do with the Finesse two times story, but it does have something to do with this one. After the incident at the Power Ultra Lounge, police used the weapon that was seized and linked it to blood gang activity in Little Rock. And this resulted in over 13 indictments being unsealed and over 49 people being implicated in it in 2018. One of these people was none other than Feezy Red. When Feezy was arrested, so was his dad, and so was 48 other people, with Feezy's dad being named as one of the longtime leaders of the gang. During the operation, the police found 42 guns, body armor, four cars, a motorcycle, $50,000 in cash, meth, heroin, cocaine, ecstasy, and some lean. Now, Feezy did four years for this in federal prison and came out in 2021, but his daddy still remains locked up to this day. These are the people that Freddy started associating himself with in Little Rock. And as I've laid out, Feezy Red is tapped in with Mucho Remo, who is tapped in in Palm Bluff. Are y'all staying with me so far? Now, it just so happens that right around the time that this operation was shut down is the exact same time that Freddie really started to make a come up. Now, I try to stay far away from accusations and things that can't be proven, but given the indictment against Freddie, one might come to the conclusion that Freddie may have stepped up and took on that distributor role after this operation went down, but that would all be speculation since Freddie still hasn't been convicted of any of his charges. Anyways, after Bankroll started to link up with Remo and Feezy, he naturally inherited some of their beef with people like PMEJB. Now some light was kinda shine on this situation when Bankroll Freddie booked a concert in Little Rock after threats went around and people were saying online that he wasn't allowed to come to the city. He popped up on Instagram with this post that said, out early, where they said I don't be with Little Rock tagged as his location. Now he did do a show and nothing happened. When he was done, he responded to the claims of people saying that he wasn't allowed in the city, saying they said I wasn't gonna do a show in the city. This my city, stop playing. It's big bank to you little homies. I mean you old homies. Yeah, 50 D, ready to put some on that scoreboard. After this post, his ops kept sending disses and songs and basically saying that he wasn't gonna make it out next time he books a show there, which prompted this post from Freddie, where he said, man, these folks make anything up these days. All these fake lies and news, you gotta be out your mind to believe half that stuff. But I don't speak on it, because this type of stuff ain't for the internet. But I'm in Little Rock every day, and ain't nobody even threw a rock at me. Matter of fact, I just did a show in y'all city that y'all say I can't come to. This is my last time speaking on this situation, but yeah. And then he booked another show at Little Rock and posted this up on his Instagram to promote it. In the caption, he said, April 2nd, pop out, homie. We had shooters with the shooters. Shooters being a club in Little Rock. PMEJB reposted the flyer on his Instagram with his own caption that said, we there, it's a celebration. And almost instantly, the people who booked Freddie for this show posted this up saying we as promoters will not promote anything violence related. The show was booked months in advance. 
but our goal is to ensure safety while having a good time. And it had cancel written across the image. PMEJV had this to say about it. Listen, man, stop acting like you ain't cancel your own show. Listen, whoever helped you cancel it, they scary too. We're just gonna go in there, pop some sh bottles. Mac, I'm not out. <laughs> Die. And on that E, why you playing with me? I told you you can't come back anyway, so he knew what was going on. Here's what Freddie's response to it was. Oh, my nigga was so much. What happened last year when y'all was supposed to do it then? Huh? What y'all, what y'all, what y'all like, no, we ain't gonna do it this time. Scary. <laughs> y'all see them hitters out there. Stink up. So much deep, man, y'all do not even play. Look wrong. Shout out your face. Nigga, you know what's happening. Yeah, act like you know. Play with it. That's all I gotta say. Play with it. Clearly. Sides had been chosen in this situation. And it wasn't just on social media, because behind the scenes, in the streets of Arkansas, things had really been heating up. Like most drill music y'all hear today, a lot of these songs were mentioning real incidents and real people that have lost their life. Here goes an example. PMEJB is cool with another rapper named DMG Fredo, and these two have been heard on a ton of songs together, dissing their dead ops. Now, most of these people being from Freddy's homies crew, RDM, or the Ring Ding Mafia. Look at these examples. I see a op, it's a brand new beat. I don't give a f about who coming with him. I hit the gate, do it like me. I hit the gate, do it like me. Go ask the world what happened to D. He tried to walk down the street, got hit with a Glock, not the fat right off feet. Hit the cut and shit get ugly. Hit that switch, boy, ain't no running. How many times can no guy hit up with that chop? These it's funny. Lonely mama, we still spending from the winter to the summer. Chia so long, I ain't gonna lie, me and bro thought he was lucky. <laughs> In that last bar, y'all could hear DMG Fredo saying R.I.P. to his mom. That's because during the midst of this beef, his mama tragically fell victim to what was happening. Again, with developments at a homicide investigation out of Little Rock, police confirming this evening a woman was shot and killed at an apartment complex on Stanley Drive. Well, Bob and Laura, police are still trying to figure out what exactly led up to that shooting that happened here on Stanley Drive. You can see yellow tape up here behind me. Not much happening in front of this apartment building, but on the other side, investigators are still back there combing through some evidence. Now, what we know right now is that police say they responded to a call around 134 this afternoon, and when they got here, they found a woman with a gunshot wound. LRPE says that they transported her to a local hospital where she later died from her injuries. The shooting happened on the second floor of one of the apartment buildings. Tonight, police say they are talking to witnesses who say they saw two black men go behind the building, shoot through several different windows at one woman. Now, I spoke with two people who live in this area and were down the street when it all happened. Take a listen. I was coming from the mailboxes. I got to like this second building down there and I just heard like four different guns going off, a bunch of shots. And then I heard someone screaming and I didn't know where it was coming from. So that's crazy for sure. But y'all listen to part of this verse from an unreleased bankroll Freddy song that might have something to do with it. Anyways, that's about as deep as I'm gonna go into that situation because like I said, most of this stuff could really deserve its own video like PMEJB and all these other rappers. So I'm not gonna go much deeper than that, but that's the essential beef he was having on the east side of Little Rock. But the beef in the east side of Little Rock wasn't the only beef that he found himself in. On September 16, 2021, he uploaded a video titled Demon Hours to his YouTube channel. This song was a feature with another artist named Block Baby, who was coming straight out of Blyville, Arkansas. On this song, Freddie, and Block Baby take some shots at more ops with lines like this right here. Steady dying, y'all some big hoes. From hell town to the view, we throwing big foes. I got flipper with me. I got trip. I got blood. They go flipper. 
sleeves down for a hit. They asked that cripple hit his ass with that photo. I heard he spent the now. This song is actually a block baby song featuring Bankroll Freddy, but Freddy made sure it came out on his platform and to his audience again, making sure that he inherited any beef that was popping in the city of Blyville. And there was some beef popping in the city of Blyville because this track was a diss record to another rapper named Big Tang. And according to Big Tang, Freddie just inserted himself into the situation out of nowhere. Big Tang did an interview with Big Chap TV and spoke about the situation saying this. There's a lot of stuff going on in Blyville that's Blyville business. You know what I'm saying? That's straight street business. And I got my little whatever going on out here going on in these streets and it really ain't got nothing to do with bankroll freddy say so that where my um smoke come in with bankroll freddy because freddy from Helena, you know what i'm saying and for him to be not part of this and be dissing at my own um, my clique and joining my op to be dissing at my people and talking about dead bodies that people you don't even know you never met and all that i feel like you know what i'm saying somebody need to he needed, somebody needed to speak to him. You know what I'm saying? Again, shout out to Big Chad TV on YouTube for doing that interview. Y'all make sure to go subscribe to him real quick if y'all want to learn more about what be going on in the state of Arkansas. Anyway, Big Tang responded to Freddie in his own dish record titled They Want Me Dead. And sir, a whole lot of times, man, you know what I'm saying? See, me be the business, man. You know, we out here, man. On the L with it like Galway, man. Thank hey, bro, Freddie, you know what I'm saying? Think we out here with the gang, sh man. Hey, he want me dead. Talking about when he see me, he gon' aim it at my head. We know he ain't like that, he gon' have to use that bread. Knowing if I catch him by himself, he gon' be scared. BBE the Bennett, we play how you wanna play. In the industry, but I be in these streets. Little right niggas told me that you running from they beat. Trying to join some niggas, you just mad, you need to stop. He ain't got no homies, so he went and joined the op. They don't want the captain like you bumping, but you not. How you a demon, what the f you done? And when you see my little cousin, why you run? Now, Bankroll did seem to have a response to that last part where Tang claims that Freddie ran from his cousin, saying, I ain't never tucked my tail, bruh. I'm a man before anything. But soon after all this, pictures began to surface online of Big Tang rocking a BKM chain, which is Freddie's record label. Band Clan Mafia, but Freddie seemingly denied it was his, saying, I been turned going to the club 20, 30 bands every weekend, and ain't nobody took nothing. Now, Big Tang did double back and add some clarification in an interview on the Don Rio show, where he says that he didn't take it from Freddie, but instead from one of Freddie's associates that was in Memphis. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and get into that chain right there. What's, what's, what, what, go ahead and tell us a story about that, Tang. Break it down like this. Break it down, man. We got time. We got time. Everybody kind of know what's going on already. Freddy's this is Well, that you know, it's real, my You know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's real or other damn run their mouth. Then you can't catch your woman. Then you finally catch the out in public. So like caught this on Bill Street after running his mouth. It walked up on his. Picked him out, snatched his chain, game with me. Oh, uh, is this Freddie you snatched it from? No, I ain't snatched from Freddie. His entourage. Okay, okay, okay. You won. Yeah, I just want to clear that up, you know. Yeah. But, you know, if you're Freddie, is, that motherfucker good to snatch to him, man. That's, that's the thing about it. I'm not playing out here. Freddie hit back with his own record titled Broke ASF, where he seemingly doubles down on his affiliations in Blyville. Again, though. It wasn't all in the records. In the streets, it was really going down, which was made apparent by the multiple shootings that Bankroll Freddy was associated with. Like on July 5th, 2020, he had an event in West Helena at a local barber shop. At around 1023, police were called to the 1200 block of Oakland Street in response to shots fired. When they arrived, they found multiple people who had been shot in the parking lot, four to be exact. But Freddy wasn't one of them. One man was pronounced dead at the hospital shortly after arriving, and the other was airlifted to another hospital in critical condition. Helena, West Helena police are asking for help this evening, finding whoever shot several people outside of a business late Sunday night. 
As Melissa Moon reports, people who found themselves running for safety say they were ambushed. AT&T crews here on Oakland Avenue in Helena, West Helena, were placing and repairing phone lines damaged by gunfire last night. Police say that someone opened a fire in this lot behind me, killing one person and injuring three others. Ten hours after a shooting in the parking lot of the Helena Barber and Beauty Shop, emotions were still running high. Family members of the victims didn't want to talk on camera, neither did anyone hear what had happened. But they did tell us the shots came from the top of this hill across the street. This is a picture taken by police. You can see dozens of evidence markers, likely shell casings. One man shot here died in the hospital, and another is in critical condition at the regional medical center. Two others were treated and released from the hospital. Neighbors say there have been problems here before. This case was never solved. According to Freddie, though, this is the normal around him. He said in his interview with DJ Vlad that he's lost more than 15 friends to this type of activity, and it all started for him back in 2009 on July 5th when his cousin died in Helena right before he moved to Conway. July 5th is the same day that that barbershop incident took place just years later, and this became a day that bankroll Freddie has deemed a retaliation day for those around him. Crazy thing about it, my cousin died July 5th, 2009. And July 5th, they just passed. An OG dude from my hood got killed on the same day. Like, it happens. Like, every year, every other year, like, some happened on that day. July 5th is a day where it be like a retaliation day. Everybody be trying to, you know what I'm saying? And this retaliation was real. I was even able to find an article from the local news in Helena from 2009 about a 16-year-old girl who became a victim of it when she was hit by bullets that were meant for her mom's boyfriend. The sergeant for the police department said in this press release that he believed this was due to an ongoing feud in the city and an incident that had taken place over the 4th of July weekend in 2009, aka the weekend that bankroll Freddie's cousin died. Fast forward to when Bankroll Freddy is popping in the rap game and he still hasn't escaped from this portion of the streets because after all them years, he found himself entangled in all these different beasts and it all culminated in Freddy being shot on two separate occasions. The first time was in 2020 and he says that he was shot in the side and grazed in the head. Take a look at Freddy in the interrogation room telling the story to the detective. I mean, just... Thought I would fight, boom, fight. And they came back, they came back shooting. You know what I'm saying? Start off at a fight, boom. I was leaving the casino, and leaving the casino, car came past me going fast as They was going so fast, like, I ain't even noticed that, that they ain't even shot my back window out. Like, I ain't even noticed none of them. They ain't even shot my window out. And I was just laughing, like, I was just getting low laughing, like, shoot like laughing playing and shit. like man okay in the midst of all that a second car and pulled up beside me second car pulled up beside me i look i just i was driving though you know so i was kind of slow driving because they were shooting in front of me up in the other car and i was driving i looked to the side i seen the dude i just laid over first shot and i got hit i got hit one went across my head i got grazed in the head my partner got grazed in the back got grazed in the head that what, that what it was. Then, in May of 2021, he was shot again, this time in the chin. Right after it happened, he let it be known that it wasn't only him, but also one of his homies named Hard Scramble Nick's mom. He posted this on Instagram while showing off the battle wound with the caption that said, I'm good, and was even taunting his ops from the hospital bed. Yeah. Thank him. Clearly, his life was on the line. And while from the outside looking in, it might look like Freddie was inserting himself into unnecessary beefs throughout the state, that just might not be the case according to the indictment that was recently unsealed. The ties that he had in the streets were part of a much bigger network that was moving kilo quantities of narcotics around the state of Arkansas. The indictment that led to Freddie's arrest was far reaching and was spearheaded by the FBI and it included everything from wiretap phones to police officers being popped. The indictment 
has over 61 counts against over 35 people that are affiliated with Bankroll Freddy. So let's have a look at how it all went down. Throughout his rap career, there were a lot of warning signs that Bankroll Freddy might have been being investigated by the feds. This was made real clear when he was arrested during a traffic stop on April 14th of 2022. He was stopped at around 6.30 p.m. for speeding on Interstate 55 in Marion, Arkansas, about 20 miles outside of Memphis. During the stop, police found a loaded Micro Draco, a polymer 89 Glock clone handgun that didn't have a serial number, seven magazines, five of which were extended, $33,662 in cash, 21 pounds of weed, and 171 grams of promethazine or lean. There's even a video floating around where a truck driver passed by the incident and recorded it where we can see large quantities of marijuana on the hood of the police car. Oh, well, you see all that weed soda in here? Nice. Let's zoom in and enhance. Yeah, that's a lot of grass. He was charged with resisting arrest, simultaneous possession of drugs and a firearm, and possession of a Schedule 6 controlled substance with the intent to deliver. Oh, and they also hit him with felony speed. Then, the day after he was arrested, they also found a switch under the back seat, which, if you don't know, modifies a gun and basically turns it into a machine gun. Interestingly enough, though, in his booking information, it says at the bottom that he was being held for another agency. Well, it turns out that agency was the FBI. During his first hearing on the matter, his bodyguard, Avery Campbell, who was also like a youth minister in Little Rock, testified that the Draco that was found in the truck was his and was left there from a previous trip. The bodyguard also testified that the other gun, the polymer 9mm, belonged to an old associate of Bankroll Freddy's named Braxton Green, who just so happened to have died in September of 2021. So he tried to pin the gun on his dead homie and his bodyguard. The truck he got pulled over in belonged to his dealership in Little Rock that he owns, and according to Freddy's bodyguard, numerous people had access to that vehicle, so it could have been anybody that put the narcotics in the truck. I got a quick question, y'all. If Bankroll Freddy didn't get on the stand and say all of this, but his bodyguard did and blamed everybody around Freddy for the charges, and he did that at the discretion of Bankroll Freddy, is it snitching? Is snitching by proxy a thing? Anyways, despite being held for the feds when he made his appearance in court, the court ruled that despite being in possession of guns, Bankroll Freddy has no previous felony convictions and does not have a history of violence. And therefore, he possesses no risk to the community. At least that's what the judge said. The judge also said his family and community ties combined with his very public career makes it unlikely that he will attempt to flee. Instead, he has every incentive to comply with release conditions that may be set forth so that he may continue working. According to his paperwork, Bankroll Freddy was released to the custody of his bodyguard, Avery Campbell, and he had to live at his residence as well. But his bond was granted. Now, Bankroll Freddy has some conditions for release that he had to abide by, like a strict 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. curfew. He had to refrain from excessive drinking and smoking marijuana. The judge said he was free to record in the studio and make videos, but he wasn't allowed to use guns, and that included prop guns. The judge also allowed Bankroll Freddy to continue to tour, so long as it was an actual concert venue, but no parties or anything like that at all. And just like that, Bankroll Freddy was released and free to continue living life, but only for a few months, because remember, the fans was on his trail. And after the death of a cop in Palm Bluff, this indictment was unavoidable for Bankroll Freddy. The indictment came in November of 2022, and laid out an entire network of operations that had been running in Arkansas, moving drugs and firearms between Little Rock and Pine Bluff. And this was happening since at least 2020 when the surveillance began, but probably prior to that as well. All of this was coordinated between two different FBI operations that each focused on a rival gang. One was EBK out of Pine Bluff, and the other was known as the Lodi Murder Mob both of which the government has said was responsible for a significant amount of the crime that was taking place throughout central Arkansas. 
the DEA and North Little Rock Police Department, identified street level methamphetamine and fentanyl dealers in central Arkansas who were connected to the exact same source of supply. Now using these informants, they were able to reveal that the drugs were being mailed into Arkansas from California. These shipments, which included kilogram quantities of methamphetamines and thousands of pressed fentanyl pills, were then distributed to individuals in Little Rock and Palm Bluff, and this went all the way down to Houston, Texas as well. In October of 2020, Palm Bluff Police Detective Kevin Collins was serving an arrest warrant at the Econo Lodge in Palm Bluff on an EBK member who was wanted for murder in the state of Georgia. While serving the warrant, things took a serious turn, and Collins and another officer were both shot during a back and forth with the EBK member. One of the officers survived the incident, but Detective Collins did not. A shootout leaves one Pine Bluff detective dead, another hospitalized tonight. Melissa Zigowitz with our Little Rock station was in Pine Bluff all day today and has details of this tragic event. That officer shot and killed is Kevin Collins, a five-year veteran of the Pine Bluff Police Department. The other officer that was shot is in the hospital but is expected to be okay. Now as for exactly what happened, police are remaining pretty tight-lipped. I can tell you uh, at his heart, being a police officer, it's what Kevin wanted to do. Unfortunately today, um, at 210 North Blake, at 1205, uh, uh, Kevin was shot. I am bluffed tonight, an officer there paying the ultimate sacrifice, dying after a shooting while another on the road to recovery this evening. Thanks for joining us at 10 o'clock, everyone. I'm Bob Clausen. And I'm Laura Monteverdi. Police have identified the officer who was shot and killed as Officer Kevin Collins with the Violent Crimes Unit. He's a five-year veteran of the force. Police say the shooting happened around noon at the Econo Lodge off of Blake Street. Both officers were then rushed to Jefferson County Regional Medical Center. Now we do know Arkansas State Police is leading this investigation. I've seen several investigators going in and out of this hospital. What we know so far is they say three Pine Bluff police officers were working an investigation at a motel when they were met with gunfire. Around 12.05 Monday afternoon, three officers at the Pine Bluff Police Violent Crimes Unit were out at the Econo Lodge Motel for an investigation. Doing that uh, investigation, shots between the officers and uh, at least one suspect um, uh, was exchanged. About two hours after the shooting, the department got the news Detective Collins died. Now, prior to his death, Detective Collins was assisting FBI with intelligence related to criminal activity of these gangs, as well as helping with surveillance, interviews, and even the arrest of individuals responsible for the criminal activity in Pine Bluff and Little Rock. In March of 2021, the FBI's Get Rock Task Force obtained a wiretap and used a total of 12 wiretaps through June of 2022 as a source of real-time information to intervene and prevent violence in Pine Bluff in the Little Rock area. Law enforcement discovered that the gangs were funding their violent activity primarily through the sale of large quantities of high-grade marijuana, very similar to the kind that Bankroll Freddy was caught with. The investigation revealed drug trafficking and traveling between Arkansas, Texas, California, Arizona, Georgia, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Oklahoma. This was a massive drug operation. The death of Detective Collins was really the starting point for the indictment of Bankroll Freddy. That's because through their surveillance efforts, they were able to link Freddy and the activity that was happening. They were reportedly in two separate recorded phone calls he could be heard bragging about how lucrative all of this was for him. When the indictment was unsealed, Freddie was charged with conspiracy to distribute and possession with intent to distribute 500 grams or more of cocaine and at least 100 kilograms, but less than 1,000 kilograms of marijuana. And he also had other drug and firearms offenses with that. Now, Freddie's father, the man who he's credited his entire life with teaching him the ways of the streets, was also arrested in this indictment, and he was charged with possession of cocaine, possession of crack, possession of weed, possession with intent to deliver, and using a phone to traffic drugs. So it all comes full circle. You live by the gun, you die by the gun. If convicted, Freddie could be facing life behind prison walls, but as of now, 
he hasn't been convicted of anything and is still entitled to the presumption of innocence. So there it is. That's pretty much a full breakdown of the bankroll Freddy situation and all of the things that he was linked to that got him indicted. Now there's more to this rabbit hole with the other rappers that we've mentioned in this video, but I'll save that for another time because like I've said, they really do deserve their own video. Now this is just another sad tale of someone who couldn't leave the streets alone. Even after finding all of the success that one person would ever need. And because of that, people have lost loved ones. Innocent people have been victimized by the crimes of these guys. And no matter what, nothing could erase all of the history that's been created behind these crews. While not convicted yet, with just the stuff I was able to publicly put together, I can't imagine what all the feds have. And if I had to guess it, this probably won't be the last time you hear about the stuff that's happening in the streets of Arkansas. Anyways, that's it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed the content, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, tap the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. As always, it's been fun rocking with y'all, man. I'm out.